when you see when you spin up a process there is always in the elf or the exe file we have the text area or, or the code section where the machine instructions live when we load this process we load it in its own vma right the kernel allocates for this process hey, all right you're going from zero to a thousand this is your code section what is the properties of the code section well it's read only you cannot write to a code ever you cannot change the code in flight but you can ex make it executable you can execute codes from this memory area this is very critical we need to talk about the virtual memory areas or vmas virtual memory areas it's a kernel data structure that lives in the process and that tells you essentially that every virtual memory has an areas it's a bunch of areas every process will have these areas because you will never ever allocate the entire virtual memory space in the process so what we allocate is areas and each area is unique some areas will have properties like this range from this from zero to a hundred don't don't pay attention to the actual numbers because they mean something in the kernel world but this is just for illustration so don't come at me with pitchforks so 0 to 100 is read only 101 to 200 is read only and executable 200 to 300 is writable and readable these can expand these can split these can shrink and it's a tree essentially and this tree has bugs has been fixed to this very day in the kernel because whenever we have a tree and we have like this chain thing you need locking to to uh, to to ensure integrity of these structures and the moment you have locking you have blocking scenarios where multiple threads trying to update the same thing you run into very interesting things i'm not gonna talk i'm not gonna talk about them right now this this is the deserve their own episode but an example of a virtual memory area is when you see when you spin up a process there is always in the elf or the exe file we have the text area or the or the code section where the machine instructions live right when we load this process we load it in its own vma right the kernel allocates for this process hey, all right you're going from zero to a thousand this is your code section what is the properties of the code section well it's read only you cannot write to a code ever you cannot change the code in flight it's a read only that's the design of the, the kernels since day one but you can ex make it executable you can execute codes from this memory area this is very critical concept when a cpu reads from this area it is allowed to execute instructions from this memory area we didn't used to do this back in 2004 everything was executable by default yeah you might say what's the problem with that well buffer overflow is a problem stack overflow is a problem you remember all these attacks that are no longer relevant they're no longer relevant these are buffer nobody talks about them because they are solved with the with the with the introduction of the marking the ver they have these problems they, they were solved with the introduction of the executable bit right because now i have a virtual memory area and i can mark this virtual memory area as executable or not i can tell the cpu that this area is not executable so even if an attacker managed to overflow my his uh, the stack uh, write something to the return address in the stack and then moved it back so that it points to something they wrote some code they wrote in the stack that will not execute because the stack is not executable these days it's not an area that you can execute code in it's more marked as nx i think right so it's not executable so things like that and this was painful to fix by the way because the cpu has the understanding of this and also the the virtual memory has to be updated and the kernel has to be updated so there is like three different components a multiple components that needs to be updated to to achieve this fix but essentially that's one example right a vma a text 
data is another uh, area in the process where you store variables right initialized variables and you can write to them so it's a read write right what else uh bss that's read only uh, area that includes the static variables that never change so that is loaded in its own read only right so you have like three virtual memory areas so you think of three nodes like if this is a structure like three nodes vma1 vma2 vma3 and we have of course the heap which is remember how the heap works there is an initial area and if you do br key break you can extend that heap extend that heap and move it up 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 or down right i don't think it goes you can go down but you can go up right to allocate more memory right so the heap is initially loaded and you can expand it same with the stack the stack is automatically extended right the heap you have to tell someone to extend it for you okay but you can see that these vmas some of them are static they will live like this some of them will will will, will expand right they will extend like the stack the stack definitely the fun as you call more functions you're going to need more frames right and you're going to stack frames and you're going to expand and expand it and that may look benign to you but it is technically an update to a vma right because if a stack starts uh from 0 to 100 and then i call another function that needs another 200 bytes or whatever needs more 200 addresses I don't want to talk in bytes right now. Then the kernel needs to go find the stack VMA, the virtual memory area. So, oh, it's from 0 to 100, but now I need to expand it to 200. So it needs to do an in-place update of that VMA and writes to it and expand it. And to write to something, you need to lock it. And that's a different whole discussion. All this, you know... <laughs> <laughs> imagine multiple threads trying to update the same vma yike you get into different interesting situations here right where, where where you have you have now racing conditions and i keep saying racing condition i uh, you you have contention at the kernel level see how fascinating this stuff i love and exploring all of this stuff but yeah, stack and heap, you get, uh, you, get, uh, you get multiple areas. And there's, of course, the anonymous areas where mmap, you can just do an mmap, which I think malloc currently use, where it will just like pick random place in memory and it will create its own virtual memory area. Right? So mmap doesn't technically is part of the heap. It is part of the heap, but it's, it's, it's not the heap vma it's a different vma it's a completely different vma will every map will te technically create a new vm map a new vma 